so one of the most common questions we get is about 0 to 10 volt dimming. Um, why do we need it? Um, what is it? How does it work? What do I need to think through? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully in today's video I'm going to demo um, some of the 0 to 10 volt and explain some things to walk through. So first thing is why do we use it? Um, the reason is, is that LEDs require a constant power of DC power. So when actually when you're going with an AC in here, it's actually converting this into DC for the LEDs. And any sort of watt restriction or power restriction on that is going to cause these to flicker and hum. You've probably all had cheap LEDs that do that. Um, as you go up in, in output, it only gets worse. And so um, there is no such thing as dimmable um, high output bulbs. We have to switch to dimmable fixtures and use the 0 to 10 volt dimming um, to do that and you'll see that it's quite effective and simple. So uh, what is 0 to 10 volt dimming? Uh, this is, happens to be our next gen 2 model 300 watt parking lot light. I have the standard three power wires here as well as two additional wires coming out uh, that are just simply positive and negative and so your standard powered as well as a um, 10 volt signal coming out of here and if the light has a 10 volt signal it goes to full brightness if the light has a 5 volt signal, it goes to 50% brightness. Uh, that's why it's called 0 to 10 um, because of that control. So very simple uh, but elegant system and as we'll see, it works very well. Um, now next thing to know is there's two different types of switches and the way to think through the actual installation and using it. Over here, happen to have our High Bay Elite series uh, linear lights and this happens to be a what's commonly called a magic switch or an unpowered switch because there is no line voltage going into it. It is simply all low voltage. Um, despite having no power going into it, you'll see that it actually dims down very well um, and back up again. Uh, the camera, we're just using a phone camera here for this demo purpose, so you might get a little flicker in there, but in reality it's a very clean power. It doesn't flicker or hum. Um, and the other nice thing is it does go to off. Um, all again without a power, it's just send, interrupting the signal and so therefore it's able to control the light. Now it seems great, but unfortunately in practice this doesn't work all that well. Um, and the reason for that is a couple fold. Number one, there is no standard spec on this, so you get some incompatibility issues. And the other reason is that all the driver makers are now switching from a 0 to 10 volt to a 1 to 10 volt, which doesn't allow you to dim to off. And the reason for that is asking the driver to hold power while sending that low voltage signal is really just a lot of work for the driver and can shorten its lifespan. So most of the major driver manufacturers have 1 to 10, which doesn't make this on-off work. Um, where this can be great is if in a parking lot environment where you can't run new wiring underground anyway for your two wires, you can put one of these on a pole in a lockbox, still have your timer or master control switch somewhere else, um, and still enable you to dim this. It has a memory mode, so if you have it at 50% brightness and then go ahead and turn the power back on again, it's going to remember that 50% brightness. So it enables you, again, backyard basketball court or parking lot, enables you to go up in brightness on the LEDs, dim them to where you want to, um, and, and do your setup that way. Over here, we have the DDSTD, again, very confusing nomenclature from Lutron. Um, happen to have a couple of Lutrons, but everyone makes these switches. But this one happens to be power, so a classic power in, power out setup, and still using 0 to 10 volt. So again, same idea. Um, dims down quite effectively, as well as we know the on-off um, power is going to work. Now, over here, I do have my clamp meter on. Um, you can see we're drawing a full 2.4 amps. I got about 125 volts here, so that would be right on with um, a 300 watt unit. Um, remember that amps is watts over volts, so running 208, 277, whatever you have, will change that number. But as we dim that back down, um, you can see that we get that number down to about 0.36, which that's about 50 watts or about 20% of the power. Um, So one of the common questions we get is, does this actually save me power because if it has constant full voltage? The answer, of course, is yes, because LEDs only take the power they need. So uh, by using that dimmer, you are going to save that additional power. So dimming at half 50% will save you half the power. So 
be a nice additional savings in an area where you don't need that extra brightness. So um, now, last thing to keep in mind, possibly most importantly here, is that because it's a powered switch, it's going to have a watt or amp restriction on it. This one is not very high, it's only 450 watts. On a 300 watt parking lot light or a 180 watt high bay light, you are going to go through that pretty quick. They do have a higher one that's 8 amps, probably a few others out there a little bit higher, um, but keep that in mind in your planning. Um, how many fixtures can you put per switch? Theoretically, the 0 to 10 volt stuff can handle about 20 fixtures in 200 feet of run um, before you start to get into some problems. Um, but the reality is you're going to probably run into power restrictions before you do that, so a couple additional switches. Um, again, these are low voltage wires, but keep in mind they are running a signal in there, and so best to keep a, a heavily shielded wire and make sure that these things aren't running any interference, such that that, shield, that signal stays constant, otherwise you're going to get some changes there as that signal gets interfered with. So, that is 0 to 10 volt dimming explained with some different options and some things to think about when you're doing installation.